Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to install ByteBase. Uh, ByteBase is kind of like a GitOps type um, thing for databases where essentially you can kind of manage your database and schemas and everything and make changes throughout it and kind of follow like a you know, CI, CD type pipeline to make it so that, you know, you test in production, uh, test in your test environment and then move it to production when you're ready. Don't test in production. I mean, who who tests in production, guys? Definitely not me. Definitely not me. Um, if you read in between the lines, definitely not me. <laughs> um, but essentially, we'll be showing you how, to, how you can use it and it's pretty good if you're trying to look for something to kind of help manage your database um, in regards to, you know, applying new uh, schema changes or DDLs and stuff like that. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content and want to sponsor me or send me some free swag or hardware, my email is in the description below. So let's get started, guys. All right. So what we'll do is log into our um, server here. Uh, 43, I think is what it is. Or, okay. So now that we've logged in, um, ByteBase actually has a container. So we're going to go with the container version here, um, to install. Um, so we will install Docker here, let that install, and then we will update DNS real quick. Boop, boop, boop. And here. Click update the serial and byte base. And eight and seventy two forty three. Awesome. So we'll commit that and a byte base commit and we should be set. So from there, we will go to byte base installation. Um, so it is kind of a nice, you know, just self-hosted thing that you can you can use. Um, I actually am not a database admin by by any means. So like, if you talk about database stuff, I am like, nope, I'm out. I'm I am usually out. But this this actually kind of you know was really insightful, honestly, because it kind of helped me think. Oh, this is you know how I would do it if I were to do database stuff. Um, especially when you're in a big company and you know you don't want to be the one writing commands on the database and going, oh yeah, I'll have to apply this, you know, to all my other databases and make sure everything's all good and and you know source controlled and everything. This is really kind of just hits the spot. So um, we're going to go under the allow external access via URL, and so they they just have a Docker run command. So what we will do is essentially just copy this. And then we will just make a script out of it. Um, we can obviously make it into like a doc compose thingy. Um, but in this case, when we're, we're just going to use what they have so that you can kind of see how it works. Um, so what we'll do also is install screen because um, by default, this doesn't run in the background, but you could add the, the um, uh, EMY install EPO release first and then screen. Um, it, it doesn't just put it in the background when you kick it off. So, but that's, that's no biggie. I just wanted to kind of show you guys from here. So, um, and then yeah, I install screen, but essentially it's going to use port 8080. Um, and we'll update the external URL here. Everything else you can just essentially keep as default. Um, so nothing too fancy. It's taking a little bit. <laughs> there we go. So, byte base. We're gonna name the screen session byte base, and we'll create a script just called start dot sh, and then we will copy this, paste this. Oh no. Nope. Oh, I hit something. Dang. Configure um, self-host. Here we go. That's the URL. Here we go. And paste. So we'll update the URL to be dragon.local. Um, and it's going to be an HTTP and not HTTPS because we're just using port 8080 here. So, but other than that, you can just keep everything else as default. Save that. We'll make sure that this is executable. That way we can just start it with a script instead of starting it um, with a command because it's a little bit easier to you know just change an update honestly. 
and it will pull the container, pulling, extracting, and completing. Um, so now it pulled, it will run it, and you'll see um, that because you're not writing in in the background mode, it's going to actually output the output in in the console. So you can see it actually sets up MySQL, um, some Postgres databases. So it actually comes. Um, with some Postgres databases already in there, so you can kind of play around with it without needing to set up your own database to hook up. Um, so that's what we're going to actually just play around with. So now you can see that it has started, um, and actually we will go to HTTP byte base uh, dragon local. Um, so it's set up on eighty here, so it's just eighty. And what we'll do here is just create our account. So um, we'll just create an account, nothing too fancy, and hit accept. All right, so now this is essentially what it looks like when you have it installed. Um, it just is kind of a little bit, depending on how you decide, you know, how you like it. Um, I mean, honestly, I think it's a pretty simple interface. It makes actually a lot of sense. Um, there's a little bit like of a quick start here where you can use, check things out. So you can do control K, get kind of like the search bar, kind of like your spotlight if you use the Mac, like your uh, command space. Um, so you can do things to like auto schema and database add an instance to a new project. Um, you can view an issue. So by default, they actually have these issues um, created by default. So in this case, they create an issue in which they want to add an email column to the employee table. Now, I'm not much of a database person, but that's, that's I would say it's like probably a pretty simple ad, um, but it kind of goes through the steps to do this D, DDL schema, um, where essentially it will, we will approve it or roll it out to uh, the stage test. Um, and then we all, once that's all good, we'll promote it to prod. So essentially you kind of have like a, your test environment and then your prod environment. And, and it works really great to kind of do this um, and make sure that what you apply should match, right? So before we actually apply this, we I'll, we're gonna go through the querying data. So um, in here, so we could actually, I, I clicked it down here, but that's not always gonna be there, but you can actually do SQL editor right here and it will open. So for example, we have our prod and test instance. So you can click on either prod or test and it will uh, get you that instance. Then you can run like um, simple SQL uh, queries. Um, so like in this case, from employee. So what we're going to do is just select everything from employee and, and it kind of try, tries to auto complete, which is nice because I have honestly no idea how to do most things in databases, but I can do simple select star commands <laughs> um, and then we can run it, right? So you can see here that this is a dummy database with just random data here of, of employee numbers, birth dates, um, first names, last name, genders, and hire dates. So if we were to go back, um, in here and run this, it's actually this issue, we can roll out and we can see that it's now deploying to stage. So now you can see applied migration version of this, employed to the database in stage. We can view the change, see what is different, um, how, it, how it changes in the database. And what we can do now is we can rerun this select and now you can see now there's an email column in our test database. Um, so, but in our prod database, when we look at it, it isn't in there because we haven't applied it yet. So essentially, once you go through your change, you look at the change, you can review the ch statement types, connection, the SQL, summary report, and everything. Um, once you're good with it and you're ready to promote to production, you just go through and you can review. So you can see how, you know, there are some errors or things that you might want to consider, um, which is actually kind of quite nice because it'll, it'll show you that, hey, you should check the results for this. Um, so you can view the rules, make sure, hey, this is just a warning. So it won't stop anything, but it's probably good to not have no values um, or set it so that that column doesn't have no values. So it also gives you some suggestions too, based off of what you have, which is great. Um, but in this case, we won't worry about that. Um, so we've promoted to stage, um, the test stage. Now we'll promote to the prod stage. So we'll just roll out again. Um, obviously it'll give you this error here, but it's not like a, a, like 
error that I need to deal with, I can just ignore it and just keep on going. But if you're more of a you know person you want to review this, make sure you review it because it makes sense. So we'll roll this out to prod. So we, we saw in prod where the, the email column doesn't exist right now. So we can see, hey, now it's done, it's refreshed, it applied all the changes in here, we should be set. And now we can requery, select, and now you can see the email column does exist in our in, in the test production database, um, which is great. Um, so from there, you pretty much can do pretty much the same thing. You would create your own project. So in this case, that was just the sample project. Um, you would create your environments. So you would create you know your your test and prod environments. So you know there's a test and prod environment here, but you would delete these and create your own ones, or you can just create different ones and name it differently. Um, then you can visit your instances, so you can add your instances. So instances are databases, so in this case, we could add our test Postgres database and our prior Postgres database here. Um, and add, just add instance, you can just go through this. And we'll probably go in a different video to show you how you can set this up, um, because uh, I'm sure that there's a few things that need to be done besides just adding some credentials. So, but it's pretty much that simple. You can now then visit your databases. So after that, you can look at your databases, see what it has for tables, see what it has for uh, functions and stuff like that in the GUI also. And once you're kind of all done, you can add members, add service accounts, add, add other things so that you can integrate this with like GitLab. I'm assuming that's what most people use this for, integrating with like a GitLab or GitHub kind of pipeline, or just kind of just using it in the GUI, honestly. Um, and people who should have access to be able to write issues to deploy new changes to your database. So there you go, guys. That's essentially byte based. There's probably a little bit more, um, but for the general base, that's kind of how you use it. And it's pretty fun, honestly. I mean, I, I don't do much with databases, but just going through the example was pretty beneficial in my opinion. And I mean, I'm more comfortable doing database changes now um, in regards to if I use this uh, for my home lab. So. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.